Hi friends, so a few weeks ago I had the esteemed privilege of going to the Museum of Science in Boston to speak at their annual gala as something of a dinosaur hype man to get the crowd riled up and fully behind the museum's mission to keep Cliff in Boston. Who's Cliff, you might ask? Well, Cliff is an exquisitely well-preserved triceratops specimen that arrived at the Museum of Science in Boston in 2005 in nine boxes with no instructions. The museum put it together and it has been wowing visitors ever since, but if we do not raise the necessary fundage by the end of this month, June 2015, Cliff may be shipped back to France. And as Americans, we're not gonna let that happen. So I hope you guys join me in doing everything we can to support the Keep Cliff initiative to make sure that Cliff stays its rightful home in Boston at the Museum of Science. So when we went, we thought, hey, let's film it. And we had a great time, so we hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as we had doing it. As much as almost. That was, that was so close. <laughs> We made it. We're here at the Museum of Science in Boston. But wait, how do we even get here? Let's backtrack. If you live in New York, oftentimes Penn Station is the first stop for any adventure. And I saw a dog and I pointed at it. I'm really good at pointing at dogs. Right there? There, there we go. That's a dog. Hey. I met a really nice guy named Sergeant R.A. Smith and we talked about dogs and photography. And then I literally ran onto the train and we left New York and we were on our way to Boston. We arrived in Boston and I fell out of the train. Real story, that happened. See, told you, here we are, we're in Boston. This dude looked like a nice guy, so I gave him a high five. I was pretty psyched to be here. And then at lunch, I received a pretty solid fortune. On the way to the hotel, my cab driver and I talked about liquid hot magma and questionable fashion choices. This is a great fashion choice if you're practicing for your speech, because that night I go across the street to the Museum of Science for my speech. And I was a little nervous. Once we got to the Museum of Science, I practiced standing absolutely still, and then I got on stage and words came out of my mouth. Please, welcome to the podium. Our dinosaur whisperer, Dustin Grover. Dustin? A few things can happen when you carry your childlike sense of exuberance into adulthood. One, you can injure yourself playing co-ed soccer, but you're also afforded opportunities like this where I get to come here and speak with you beautiful people today about why it is so important that we keep Cliff here at the Museum of Science in I'm coming. Grab that plesiosaur, that dinosaur, that flying reptile, hold that in your hand for one moment. The reason why I want everyone to hold that in their hand is because for literally thousands upon thousands of kids, every single year, this is how it starts. I know that's how it started for me. All it took was a tiny toy dinosaur to engender a lifelong love for and fascination with these amazing creatures. The paramount responsibility of Institute Museum of Science is to fan the flames of that innate sense of wonder and curiosity for the natural world that every single one of us in this room were born with. Does anyone here own a time machine? No. You? Really? No. I assume no one here owns a time machine, but we do have the Museum of Science. And we do have Cliff. And when you come here and you stand next to Cliff, whether you're 4, 40, or 400 years old, Cliff allows you to commute through time. When you stand there next to that animal, and I do mean that specific animal, because Cliff is not a model, Cliff is not a cast, Cliff is not a replica. That is an actual, real fossilized remains of a real creature that lived here. Not in some children's book and not some fantastical sci-fi novel, but here in North America, 68 million years ago, weighing in at about 20,000 pounds. In 2008, Cliff arrived here at the Museum of Science in nine boxes, no instructions. The fabulous staff, no, that's a true story. The fabulous staff here were able to piece it together, put it on display, and set it up right over there. That kind of hurt. <laughs> I've, I've never done this with a sling before. It allows us as adults to commute back to when we were children, and when all it took was maybe a tiny toy dinosaur, or a trip to a museum much like this, to stand next to a fossilized specimen like Cliff. So I implore you guys tonight to join me in doing our part do everything we can to make sure Cliff stays here at the Museum of Science so that we, our children, and that our children's children can come back here and stand next to Cliff and have that exact same feeling. My name is Dustin, and not only do I love dinosaurs, but I freaking love Cliff, and I hope you guys will help me keep him here in Boston. Thank you, guys. Also, I just learned how microphones work, and I tried to immediately give mine back to a guy who already had one. Good. You're good. Great job, pal. How about a big round of applause once again for Dustin? Thank you so much, Dustin. And then I had the chance to do some more stand stilling, and I also practiced moving my arm up and down, talking to people, walking around, pointing at things, looking at my watch. That was a good thing, too. Oh, pointing again. I'm really getting good at this. See? More pointing. Even this guy's getting in on the action. 
but back to Cliff, because that's why we're here. Hello, so we are here at the Museum of Science uh, in Boston. I am with Janine Madrid, who is a senior education associate here, who is also a fellow dinosaur nerd. Hey, remember how I said I was bad at microphones? Yep, I broke ours. So instead of actually showing you the interview, you can only look at the interview, which is kind of like showing you because they both use your eyeballs. Enjoy! See you later, T-Rex. It's time to explore Boston. And I love your subway maps because I think I'm going to name my kids Wonderland, Braintree, and Ruggles. I was pretty stoked to go see this giant Lego dinosaur. No! That is not a dinosaur. That is not okay. But still, it's made out of Lego and it's pretty huge, so pretty cool. As I explored around Boston, I found some cool stuff, like the number one door. I tried to climb up there, but it's really hard when you're hurt to do stuff with one hand. As evidenced by me trying to put on these head canceling thingies. Head canceling thingies. <laughs> like noise canceling thingies over your entire head. And I really wanted to put them on because look, I found a T-Rex! Sadly, my time in Boston had come to an end. So I got back on the train, I looked at some pictures of dinosaurs on the internet, and then I arrived home in the most beautiful place on Earth, the Penn Station. Hi again! As always, don't forget to leave your questions and comments in the sedimentary layers below. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, but most importantly, definitely click right here to see how you can help keep Cliff in its rightful home at the Museum of Science in Boston. <laughs> hey buddy. And remember, whether you're searching for dinosaurs, asking questions, or simply a squirrel trying to hide a nut, never stop digging. Now that is a good question that we call fur. So the layer of change is a pretty crazy time in our history. I'm exposed to a fair amount of volcanoes.